Good morning. It is an absolute marvelous Monday. Sun shining, fall weather is fell. It is a delightful, delightful day. God is doing great and mighty things. I, we were so encouraged yesterday. Uh, God's laid a word on my heart about it being an encourager. And it goes right along with what the day we had yesterday. So stay tuned. Be reading out of Hebrews and talking about being an encourager. Monday. It is a beautiful day here in Metropolis. Hopefully it's a beautiful day where you're at. Yesterday was an absolute amazing day. I'm so blessed. Donna and I are so encouraged. We so appreciate your love and kindness expressed to us yesterday. God's love is so amazing and the love of this church for their pastor it just it doesn't matter if it was me or Mark or whoever. Your love for your pastor is just so amazing. And we so appreciate your expressions to us yesterday. It was a glorious, glorious day. God was in the house, did great things. We're so thankful you're joining with us online. And uh, like I said, it's just yesterday evening with our fellowship, Fifth Sunday fellowship at the campground. We had an awesome crowd. Uh, just an awesome night. He had a fire raging and roasted hot dogs and marshmallows and sat around and sang songs. And it was just an absolute amazing day. And we're so blessed that God is doing great and mighty things through us. And it's not over. More is yet to come. The better is coming. God is building a foundation that we can grow up and grow higher. And so just hold on. Just hold on to eternal promises. God stays faithful and true. And it's so amazing, so amazing, his love and his mercy and his grace. So uh, I'm so blessed. Like I said, last night after everybody left, Don had went through the cards and, after everybody left, I went in and sat down at a table in the camper and started going through. And your it just your love and your kindness is a, it, it's just overwhelming. We're so thankful that God called us back home. So we're 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 here. God's here. You're here. We're so thankful. Just uh, we're, I'm gonna read out of Hebrews and talk about being an encourager. And you so encouraged this pastor yesterday and his wife, so we thank you. And so, reading out of Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 14, and it says, So, dear brothers and sisters, you are now made holy, and each of you invited to the feast of your heavenly calling. So fasten your thoughts fully onto Jesus, whom we embrace as our apostle and king priest. For he was faithful to the Father who appointed him in the same way that Moses was a model of faithfulness in what was entrusted to him. 
But Jesus is worthy to receive much greater glory than Moses, for the one who builds a house deserves to be honored more than the house he builds. Every house is built by someone, but God is the designer and builder of all things. Indeed, Moses served God faithfully in all he gave him to do. His word prophetically illustrates things that will later be spoken and fulfilled. But Christ is more than a servant. He was a faithful as a son in charge of God's house. And now we are part of his house if we continue courageously to hold firm to our bold confidence and our victorious hope. This is why the Holy Spirit says, if only you would listen to his voice this day. Don't make him angry by hardening your hearts like your ancestors did during the days of their rebellion when they were tested in the wilderness. There your fathers tested me and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years and they still doubted me. They ignited my anger with that generation, and I said to them, they wonder in their hearts just like they do with their feet, and they refuse to learn my ways. My heart grieved over them, so I decreed they will not enter into my rest. So search your hearts every day, my brothers and sisters, and make sure that none of you has evil or unbelief hiding within you, for it will lead you astray and make you unresponsive to the living God. <laughs> this is the time to encourage each other never to be stubborn or hardened by sin's deceitfulness. For we are mingled with the Messiah if we continue unshaken in this confident assurance from the beginning until the end. When we think of encouragement many times, we look at it as sometimes actually an option. However, encouragement is so important to the church, God didn't merely recommend it. He explicitly commands it. God commanded his people to encourage each other because he knows we need it. In the Gospel of John, Jesus warned that the, in this world you will have trouble, which he then followed with a much-needed encouragement. But take heart, I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. We live in a broken world where everything calls us towards selfishness and despair. <laughs> Sin steals our joy. Our bodies break down, our, our plans falter, our dreams die, and our resolves weaken, our perspective dims. We are promised suffering, persecution, and trials of various kinds. When encouragement is absent from the life of the church people, we feel unloved, unimportant, useless, forgotten. God knows his people are in full need of grace-filled reminders, so he calls us to encourage each other every day until the sun returns. On this first day of the rest of our lives, let us be encouraging to others. Ask God to open our eyes to someone that really needs encouragement this week. Ask God to show you someone that really needs to know that you care about them. You might just be surprised at how God uses that situation not only to bless them, but truly to bless you also. Some of the things we have to understand is why encouragement to others is so important. Biblical encouragement isn't focused on complimenting someone's haircut or telling them that salsa they made was really good. That kind of encouragement is important, but the encouragement the Scripture refer to is explicitly Christian encouragement. Encouragement is shared with the hopes that it will lift someone's heart toward the Lord. It points out evidences of grace in another's life to help them see that God is using them. It points a person to God's promises and assures them, whoo, we're all under his control. <laughs> the New Testament reveals that the encouragement was a regular part of the early church life together. They shared scripture, saturated words with each other to spur one another in faith, hope, unity, joy, strength, fruitfulness, faithfulness, perseverance, and certainly looking forward to Christ's return. Encouragement was and is an essential way of extending grace to each other. We seem to want grace, but we're just as quick, are we just as quick to extend it to others? 
There isn't only one right way to do, but here are a few ideas to help us get started with an encouragement. Pray for God to make you an encourager. Ask him to give you a heart that loves others and a creativity to know how to show it. Ask him to help you die to self-centeredness and grow in desire to build others up. Because God delights in helping his people obey his commands, we can trust that his spirit will teach us how to bless others for his glory and their spiritual good. Make encouragement a daily discipline. For so some of us, encouragement comes natural. For others, not so much so. I need this reminder to pause, to pray, and then intentionally try to spur someone on to follow Jesus Christ. Pray for God to show you who to encourage. Ask God to bring someone to your mind that you should reach out to. One way to do this is maybe praying through our church's membership directory. Use scripture. Nothing encourages like the promises from God's word. Make a list of scriptures that God used to bless you personally or an excerpt from something you read in your daily devotion. Be specific in what you say. Make sure you stay in touch with God and provide them with specific encouragement for what they are facing today. Nothing encourages a pastor like hearing specific ways God used a sermon to work in their life. You are so encouraging to this pastor. I tell you, there's not a service goes by that some, several of you will tell me it was a blessing. It, it is a blessing to be a servant in this church. Pray that God would create a culture of encouragement in your church. Ask God to make your church a community that loves each other in specific, tangible ways like encouragement. Ask God to use you to help fan that flame. Don't get discouraged if people don't return your encouragement or if you don't see fruit from it. Creating a church culture that glorifies God takes a long time. Lots of prayer and abundant grace. I encourage us to keep at it. Many scriptures exhort believers to encourage one another. And yet sometimes we get so busy in our lives we neglect thinking about others. We may become insensitive to the concerns of those around us. So how can we be a better encourager? First step may be to ask God to help us to be less self-focused and more sensitive to the needs of others. And then we need to ask his wisdom in knowing how to encourage our brother and sisters in Christ. Sometimes it takes a listening ear just showing we care by really listening to what they have to say. They might have a problem or an idea and they hesitate to move ahead with, but and sometimes there's special challenges. Just knowing that someone values them enough to listen can really be an encouragement. Perhaps they need words of encouragement. Nothing can be more encouraging than God's word shared from a loving heart. Maybe they need to show Maybe they need to show us faith in them with action. As we prayerfully approach them, God will guide. As you consider these thoughts, does someone come to your mind? Someone who may need encouragement? Pray. Take action. Call or meet for coffee or dinner or just sit down and have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Find out what's on your friend's mind. Listen to them and share God's word. Demonstrate your confidence in them day by day ask god to help you get out of your box and get out into this world and find ways to encourage others it's an act of inspiring others with a renewed courage spirit hope when we encourage others we spur them on we stimulate them and affirm them I do not care how influ influential or secure or mature a person may appear to be. Genuine encouragement never fails to help. Most of us need massive doses as we slug it on in, out in these trenches. But we are usually too proud to admit it. 
Unfortunately, this pride is what's prevalent among members of God's family as it is in the streets of the world. It is helpful to remember the distinction between appreciation and affirmation. We appreciate what a person does, but we affirm who he is. Appreciation comes and goes because it's usually related to someone's accomplishment. Affirmation goes deeper. It is directed to the person himself or herself. While encouragement would encompass both, the rarer of the two is affirmation. All of us need encouragement, somebody to believe in us, to reassure and enforce us, to help us pick up the pieces and go on, to provide us with increased determination in spite of the odds. What our text today reminds us, we can't do this alone. One of the issues that continually face believers is the idea that we, we're okay by ourselves. Oftentimes we think that we, we don't need others. Christians, in order to progress in our spiritual growth, however, when we provide encouragement to each other, it gives us the courage to persevere in our faith. There's someone in your life that really needs to be encouraged. They walk in a relationship with Jesus. As the challenge has been this week, we are all in need of encouragement. Look for who God wants you to encourage. So let's get started. Who can you encourage right now? Who has blessed you recently that you can thank them? What verse can you share with them? What might God be able to use you to help them with? May the Lord do more than we can imagine through just a little encouragement. As I said, I was so encouraged this weekend. It was a blessing. The whole weekend was just a blessing from start to finish. God was in the house, stirring hearts, doing great and mighty things. His spirit is moving. We so look forward to this upcoming weekend with our pastoral candidate and his wife coming in. Hey, there's nothing too big for God. Reach out. There's somebody today, this week, that needs to hear a thank you or a bless you. You're doing good. Keep up the good work. Let's be encouragers. Let's encourage one another. We can make it. We're going to make it with Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for this day. I thank you, God. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my church family. I thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things you're doing. Father, help me to be an encourager. Help me to say those words of kindness, to say those words of understanding. Father, you, you help me to be in the places you want me to be and to help those people that need to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, it is so important that as we go about our daily lives, we hide your word in our heart. We may not sin, but we need that word hidden also that we can use it at the needed times to share your love and your mercy and your grace. God, be with us through this week. Help us, direct us, and guide us. We'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, it's a glorious day. It's a beautiful day. The fall weather is awesome. All right, so we just had a great crowd last night come out for our fellowship and we had a great time i so enjoyed the presence of the lord and uh it, it's just a glorious day so like i said we got a busy weekend our pastoral candidate brett and stacy ladlo will be with us this weekend and so so looking forward to what god's going to do so be in prayer be uplifted and be an encourager because you know what we're going to make it with jesus and the lights are still on at the lighthouse. Have a blessed day because you are a blessing.